not even, I mean, I talk to people, but that's not really talking about the, uh, the land. It was super fertile um, farmland. And what happens when you move a farmer into a, into a city, I mean, he loses his livelihood. He never had a job necessarily. He grew his own food that he could then sell to get a little bit of money. But then you put him in a house, he's now got to pay for water. He never, he never had to pay for it. He's now got to pay for wood. He never had to pay for it. He's now got to pay for food. He never had to pay for it. And you don't give him a job. So it's kind of like double. Um, it's just one of the places on the way up. <coughs> um, so this is the head of the UN Environmental Program. It would be arrogant to assume that humanity can survive without biodiversity. We cannot sacrifice the planet's arteries to save their lungs. Kind of, um, so those two, you can just loop together. Uh, I'll introduce you real fast. Um, so this video is actually hard to produce. Um, it's pretty sad. It's from a uh, documentary called A PNC by a Canadian Chinese filmmaker. He went over there and documented uh, this, this one family specifically and their daughter as uh, they had to center on one of the cruise ships that were hooking up down the Yangtze as the water's coming up because they're going to be relocated soon. And um, he, these clips aren't necessarily about that. He's going around just talking to different people about how the Three Gorges is affecting them uh, and their insight. It's, even not, it's, um, it's pretty hard to watch, actually. So the first bit's about a guy being relocated, or I think he's been relocated. And then the second bit is kind of the other side of the story. Okay.
So, 46% of the Three Gorges budget was relocation. It was about building the houses you saw, which were just model homes. I mean, like, they were all like 1.3 million people living and stuff like that. Maybe more than 40 percent of the budget. 12% um, of that, of the relocation, was officially recorded as embezzlement. It's like, no official records embezzlement. That just means 12% um, did a bad job embezzling. That's all it means. So, uh, hardly any of that money got fed back to locals. And so, the reservoir has been rising, and so there's uh, now all these landslides demolishing cities coming in. Uh, they actually stopped the raising of the reservoir because of landslides uh, this, and garbage. Um, who knew that when you flood a valley in China, you get a lot of garbage coming out of everywhere? Um, I mean, it's like it's like flooding a, it's like flooding a landfill. Like, of course you're going to get garbage. It's really flooding. Um, this is a different river that Brian and I came across. This just kind of shows what they do. They, I mean, this is cool. They bring it out of town, right? It's not in town. It's like one step there. Except, it's just an idea. Out of sight, out of mind. It goes out of here, and it goes in the river, it goes out the ocean. So, there's the three birdies. <laughs> Cook raise the most impressive part because there's too much trash. Um, and then here's another. This is not the three gorges, um, but this makes the point of seismic activity. There is so much tectonic action over there. Um, this earthquake, I believe it was in 2008. Uh, 69 damage reported as, um, I had some official term, but basically it was like beyond repair, like we've got serious problems. Our day was about to bust, is what it was. 3,000 reported uh, damage. And so everyone knows India is running into Asia. We all know that. And why I don't know about that. Um, India is really thick and really light. It cannot subduct like the plate is here, going under the Cascade, the coastal, the Sierras. It stays up top of light and just smashes in. And then all this stuff crinkles. Uh, so these are showing stress marks. All the dams are right down here. You've got all those big ones like this is um, And so these are quakes in one year in China. So this is kind of the Yunnan area. Um, and these are the proposed dams. It's like the exact same spot. And you can't help it though. This is where all the gradient and all the water is. It's the natural place to put a dam. Unfortunately, it's the natural place to have it. I mean, sorry, it's just a different natural disaster. Um, earthquakes happen. So, what do you do? <laughs> um, there are a lot of problems. And there's got to be a lot of solutions too. Um, I believe there's a video coming up. Yeah, so that here is one. Um, <clears throat> this is Travis's solution. Um, some other kayakers went down there and filmed it. Yeah, you go ahead. You want to play it. Um, and so this is kind of what Last Sense is all about. Counter Rivers Project as well. Um, this is just introducing their idea. Um, it's on the internet if you want to watch. It's called Rivers Last Breath. This entire thing is on video. So it's pretty cool. The Soaring Peaks here in western China have lured mountaineering expeditions for generations. But the exploration of the rivers in between these mountains didn't begin until the 1980s. Many remain unexplored today. Rafter and kayaker Travis Wynn has been quickly changing the status of these unexplored rivers by organizing and leading whitewater expeditions in China for nearly a decade. Your best friend is your life jacket. And everyone should have a helmet as well. Um, He's not your average river rat, though. Along with two local Chinese partners, Travis started a rafting company called Last Descents River Expeditions, which aims not just to run rivers, but more importantly, to help protect them. Our goal, our mission right now, is to figure out the fastest way to bring as much attention to these rivers as possible, to get people to understand and individually, personally, reach the conclusion that they're worth protecting. So this is like the SIR, SITN. To reach that goal, he's assembled a team of 28 scientists, conservationists, and river enthusiasts to participate in a historic expedition on the great bend of the Yangtze River. The beauty and quality of this 120-mile section of roadless whitewater 
is often compared to the Colorado River's Grand Canyon. Unlike many of Travis's expeditions, however, the rafters will not be the first to paddle this whitewater gem. Due to a series of three large dams currently under construction, they will be the last. Yeah. 